everybody, welcome to one hour of Reaper Miniature Goodness. Uh, just check the sound is working okay f for me, please. Um, our internet has been a bit up and down. It's been doing lots of this whirly swirly thing, so I'm not sure if it's been working correctly or not. Good, excellent. Let me say hello to everybody, and there's lots of you today. Um, a Scorpius there, Michelle, uh, blah, 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 me, <laughs> Carlos, uh, Nath, thank you for subscribing again, Nath, very, very nice of you. Rod's in the house, Casper Kenobi, hello Casper. And we got Dawn, hello Dawn, and Mokai, oh, all the lovely people are in. And my daddy is in, and my daddy is in, there he is. The Goblin Emperor is in the house. <laughs> Gerald's in the house. Muses touch. Hello, Muses touch. I hope everybody is lovely and moist tonight. Okay, let's make a start, shall we? Um, this is. The <laughs> this is. The I can't remember what it's called now. You've got. <laughs> We're painting the ruined temple tonight. Um, what I've done so far is just to. <laughs> <laughs> just just to make it um, a little bit easier and to save a little bit of time what I've done I've covered the whole of the miniature in dragon black so it's just got a nice even coat all over of the old dragon black by MSP paints um, and that's really just perfect for what we're going to do it's going to be a, a really nice easy paint tonight you all know it's a it's, it's going to be a dry brush extravaganza so um, what I'll do I'll start getting some paints on my palette and we'll make a start so we're going for some greys today uh thank you renegade shank for subscribing and welcome again uh gonna put some greys on the palette and that, that noise is my warthog my little paint mixer so we've got greys um i'm using some of um light greys and we'll go into some other different colours as well. We're actually going to be using uh, Reapers. Thank you for subscribing, Casper Kenobi. Uh, we're going to be using some brown ink. I don't normally use Reapers inks. Uh, but um, I thought I'd give them a little little go tonight and see how we get on with the brown inks later on. Um, I'm also going to be showing you the weathering powder. Now this is the weathering powder from uh, Forge World. Um, it's like poster paint. And if you buy poster paint, it's just dust. So if you buy poster paint, it's almost the same thing. Um, but I'll be showing you how to, to apply that to your miniature later on. And we'll all do that in this hour because it's a very simple paint today. So all we're going to do is start getting some paint onto my tissue here. And we're going to... <laughs> what's, what's going on again? <laughs> It's a hype train! Ooh. <laughs> We're going to start blasting this grey. Now, I've got um, a little sellotape roll there. Thank you for subscribing, Ravencroft. And that's going to help me just spin it around while we're doing the actual show. Now, let's see if we can get a bit closer and a bit more light. And here we go. Super, super simple. We're going quite heavily over all the black areas. For the initial dry brush we just want to get lots of heavy paint all over and we're leaving the black the black is all our shadows it's super simple so we're just plowing around keep i'm keeping the brush strokes going one way by the way my brush strokes are going down not up we're keeping the brush going down all the time we're not going back up and this is giving us the edge for all the parts of the bricks and everywhere else. So there is method in the madness. So just super fast going around all the black. Now, once again, I don't know what time Tule is going to start her stream. 
Uh, but um, she's been starting her streams later and later, so when I finish my show, I've actually been missing her. Um, it's not been done on purpose. Um, so, <laughs> um, last week, I think she started at 10 o'clock or something, something ridiculous like that, crazy time. Um, so, if she is online later, we shall raid her channel, but if not, then um, I'll have to give it a miss again. Um, but she is working... Um, all the time so we can't expect her to give up her job just to do an earlier stream um, so I will be doing a um, every every, every um, stream I'm doing now I shall be giving away a free miniature and it'll be a random miniature it'll either be a painted miniature or it will be an unpainted miniature and it's going to be like today will be for um, Reaper miniatures, and on Thursday it will be a Wiz Kids miniature. And the the free uh, giveaway is for all the uh, my patrons, my Goblin patrons that are actually on a painted tier. Um, I'm I have to keep repeating this bec um, because I don't want people to get all excited about entering um, a free competition when they can't actually have the miniature um, the reason why I have the giveaway for my patrons on the painted tier is because um, I can actually send the free gift with their painted miniatures that I'm doing for them uh, throughout the months um, it's just um, because the postal costs are so extortionate now um, I can't afford to just give away a free mini and then post it worldwide um, it really is expensive now so i do apologize to my patrons that that are on a, a lower tier um if you are lucky in the future um <laughs> you might be able to get onto one of my painted tiers um they all seem to be sold out as soon as i um put them up on my patron i haven't got any at the minute for anybody to hold on to and I do apologize, but there's only so many miniatures I can actually paint in a month, even though I'm speed painting most of the time. Awesome, Dawn, thank you. Uh, Dawn, Dawn Rocker um, from Crypt Monkey Studios um, is actually probably one of my first, one of, one of, one of the first 10 patrons I ever had. Um, so um, it's been a long time. Uh, Dawn and I have been good friends for a long, long time. I have no idea what's going on in chat at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just carry on painting. <laughs> now, as you can see, I'm using the black to my advantage, and this is why um, the black is very good for this type of thing. Now, this actual ruin would look good for. I'm missing every what people are saying. This type of ruin. Um, would work as a desert one as well. You could do it for desert, jungle. I think this actual miniature could fit with any of your games um, and it could be painted in any colour. Um, I'm just going for the simple gothic colour just to give you an idea of how easy it is to dry brush and paint all your miniatures super fast and easy. So we're just keeping going across we're only going one way of the brush and we're just making sure all those little tiles and all the broken pillars have just got a nice coating on. And we're going to go over it again. I want to bring out more grey, um, but we're using that, we're keeping the black free in certain parts. So again, we're going back over again with the grey. So we've got another. <laughs> I 
Well, chat has gone wild tonight. <laughs> Full of weirdness. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who subscribes to the channel. Um, I I can't thank you all enough to it really does help um, I mean let's put it this way you su su supported me um, on this um, channel like this is a little bit of pocket money it pays for these paints and the brushes um, it's fantastic um, and every little tiny little bit helps and I do hope um, a few of you find my streams um, interesting enough and you're learning little techniques or just seeing how um, exciting and fun it is to paint up these miniatures and also seeing the new miniatures from Reaper I mean I'm getting very very excited now because um, we will be having our Bones 5 Kickstarter soon um, and that'll be coming through the door and you're gonna see hundreds of YouTube videos and Twitch shows from me painting up all the new miniatures, all the new dioramas. There's absolutely tons and tons and tons of beautiful new miniatures to go through. Oops, excuse me. So as you can see, that the, it's starting to get a really nice grey going all around it now. But we don't want it to look dull and grey, grey, grey. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep going around. And I'm going to start adding some lighter greys. I'm just going to start building up. So all we're doing is we keep on going around, keep on going around. But what we're doing is a lighter coat each time. So we're just building up all the stones and making them all stand out and look awesome. It's a really fast, easy way to paint and it just works so, so well. <laughs> Naif, it's not that big. <laughs> It's a nice little set. It is a nice little set. Um, I, I'm actually thinking of uh, mounting the set onto a separate um, board as well. Um, so I could actually make it into one of my dungeon sets. So I'll probably mount this onto a 12 by 12 MDF board and then I'll probably build around it eventually. Um, just so it fits in with my uh, dungeon crawler games um, I think it would make a nice little marker uh, this could you could have some kind of treasure or you could have a unique item here or legendary item here that you could collect <laughs> okay I'm gonna start adding lighter tones now to this gray I think we've uh, we're leaving the dark in the corners I hope you can see everything okay on the cameras in focus But definitely, if you're going for like a, um, a gothic, um, old castle type look, um, cathedral, then you definitely want to start with a nice black undercoat. And then you can just work up your layers. Now, I'm actually going to go into some vamp vampiric skin now. And we're going to start uh, making it a little bit lighter with that. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I give some inspiration to some of you. And I've lost my pokey stick. What do I do with my pokey stick? I think my pokey stick is in the front room. I'm gonna have to actually take this off and do it this way. There you go. There we are. I've been painting in the living room with Claire. Um, thank you for following Crip Monkey Studios. Um, so I got half my bits and bobs in the living room table. <laughs> now so what I'm doing now is I am mixing some vampiric skin with the grey um, and this is just giving us a lighter colour. Uh, 
and we can just go over where we've been now and this will just highlight it a little bit more The didgeridoo paint mixer. It's the it's the warthog. It's the it's the warthog now. <laughs> okay, so we're just moving on. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using this lighter paint, really, just on more of the edges now. So we're starting to lighten up with how heavy we are going around everywhere. Okay, this is good. I'm just starting to highlight the edges of all the stonework uh, so more heavily applying to the parts of the miniature okay now doesn't need a lot more and we can start adding some color and adding some little special effects to this miniature and as you can see we've already brought out a lot in the miniature already and you can actually leave it like that and it look fantastic on your tabletop um, but what we're going to do now is just add a little bit of the old weathering paint and we're going to add some of this brown ink wash um, so I'll just give my brush a wash and then we'll move on. My dad been making muffins again, has he? <laughs> okay, so this is the brown ink wash from MSB Paints from Reaper Miniatures. So we're going to give that a little buzz. It's quite a, um, a dark mix. And we're just going to apply it with a monster brush from Army Painter. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have some tissue handy. All we're going to do is add this and poke it into the recesses and then remove it with our tissue. Now, let's see if I can get this down closer. There we go. Now this is just an experiment with the ink wash from MSP and it actually works very well. It's it's a lot thicker, I should I'll have to say. It's a lot thicker than your normal ink wash. So you will have to be careful with this one um, and make sure you put it on very lightly compared to like the Agrax Earthshade. Um, it is going on very strong but it's doing what I want it to do um, and that is go into those recesses and give a nice little bit of color 
Now, the reason why I'm removing the I'm, I'm removing the ink wash with a tissue is this actually blends it in really well. It takes away the excess that I don't want, but it leaves a nice highlight and it's going into all those little recesses here. Um, and that's just a little thing that I, I just personally like myself. You don't have to use a tissue, you can just leave it on. But I just find by removing the ink wash with a tissue after you've added it, um, really weathers weathers the ink um, it really makes it look more um, used worn old antique <laughs> trying to get all my words out there yes Dawn this is the first time I've really been using the um, the MSP um, um, brown ink um, I've used um, army painter and uh, the, the games workshop ink for so many years but I wanted to try using this and I I have to agree with Dawn um, you probably could add a couple of definitely add a couple of drops of water to this ink wash because it is very strong um, it's very strong but it's doing what I want it to do so I'm quite happy so I'm just adding it around the edges I will be doing my little green moldy effects in a bit as well. So, so we're just going around the edge of the, um, the miniature with our brown ink wash. And again, I just use my tissue. I'm just dabbing the tissue over the brown. I'm going around the darkest areas again. Okay, we can start getting a. Oh, I went into my I went into my wrong paint there. Oops, <laughs> I just went into the wrong paint. One second, I'll take that away. If you've added paint, like I, I've just gone into my grey and added that to there. If you want to get rid of your paint, if you do that, just um, put your brush into water, and then just add the water to where you've just added the wrong paint. This waters down the paint that you've just added, and then you can just take it away instantly, like so. And that paint I've just added that I didn't want there has now gone, um, and we can start again. So, very easy to repair your mistakes. There we are. So we're just going around all the dark areas with our brown ink wash from MSP paints um, I do like it I will give I will say I do like it um, but with with any paint uh, sometimes you have to get used to the new textures um, but it's a very nice brown it's a very nice brown so I have sepia Valeco are absolutely amazing, Dawn. Yes, um, I've got all the, I've got all the washes from Valeco. Valeco. I'm terrible for buying paints anyway. Um, I I think I collect paints just as much as I collect miniatures. Um, um, it always fascinates me, and I kind of want to get the whole collection from every company and try out all the paints um, and that's just awesome it's always good to have a lovely collection of paints yes 
Oh, I know you collect all the fabrics and board games, that's for sure. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to get with the ink wash, we're adding like dirt and a shade going around all the different parts of the little mini. Um, just got a little bit more, just a little bit around here. You don't need a lot, um, but it just does add a lot to the miniature just by adding these little bits to it. Okay, right. Let me see how we're getting on. Yeah, that's looking great. Okay. What we're going to do now is I'm going to start adding my greens. So we get that moldy green going around. And then for the last part as well, we'll just add that. I'll show you that texture paint, which is uh, great fun. Now I am hoping um, Reaper Miniatures uh, will start doing more buildings because um, this year again will be after we receive our Bones 5 Kickstarter we'll be moving into Bone 6 Bone 6 Kickstarter so um, yes it does make the mini pop just by adding a tiny little bit of brown here and there um, already the miniature has been transformed and it just adds so much more to that miniature uh, and now I forgot what I was saying yes um, but bone six uh, will probably be by the end of the year September or October um, and I'm really really hoping that Reaper miniatures might start doing a tavern or blacksmith's forge um, I mean stuff like that things we really really want for our games um, and I've been after a tavern from Reaper for years. I keep I keep on nagging them at every Kickstarter. So, <laughs> SDL files. Oh, I I, I don't I, I really don't know. If, um, I mean, three D printed is fantastic, um, but I think if Reaper went down the SDL file road, um, it would be very difficult because. I have a 3D printer, but many, many people don't. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I really, I really don't know what what, the, what I'd call on that one. Yes, I, I think um, um, it's very difficult how many miniatures I have already in the house. Yes, I, I, they definitely, de definitely um, would be good to have that option as a as a SDL 3D print option. Um, definitely. Um, I mean, like I say, I've got um, I've got um, both the f uh, 3D printers for plastic and resin, um, and I use them all the time. Um, but I'm I'm talking about um, many people haven't got the room or the time. Um, I per I personally would prefer to buy um, a tavern, for for example, directly from Reaper because I know. Definitely with a tavern, um, we're going to have a much better quality sculpt than what my 3D printer will do. Um, for the resin printers, yes, um, a small miniature for a resin printer comes out absolutely beautiful. But for the larger plastic um, prints, we've still got those lines. Um, so at the minute, I'd still 100% recommend having um, a physical a physical miniature from Reaper for the very large miniatures. Yes, definitely. Okay, I've got some green, so now we're just going to add a little bit of green here and there, just to give a little bit of wear, a little bit of mold going around the mini. A little bit on the floor there. A little mold starting to creep up and around. Let's 
going up over the pillars. Going all over the stones as the years pass and all the vegetation takes over and starts burying all the stonework. Oh, sorry, this is... <laughs> I sound like a fish. Um, I, I should be... I've, I've actually lost my paint. What have I done with it? <laughs> I'm using jungle camo. Sorry, Dawn. Jungle camo. <laughs> jungle camo by MSP Paints. There's certain paints um, that are just perfect uh, for everything. They're like uh, multi-use paints um, and they work for all sorts of applications and miniatures. Okay, I'm starting to work the green into that brown that I've added now. So we've got green and brown at the bottom. I'm just you know, building it up a little bit more around the corners. Going around. And the green is working with that brown fantastic. Uh, but you're going to see a huge difference in a minute once I add that um, forge willed dust. Okay, that's looking great. It's starting to look worn. It's got a bit of colour in there. Got a bit of green going. Nice browns, and it's really starting to pop and come alive. Okay, let me show you this weathered paint powder paint thank you Tal how are you Tal you okay right for the powder paint I need to put this onto a piece of paper uh, because it's a bit of a dusty mess okay there's our little, let's get, me, get it angled right for you. Now what you need to use for your weathering powder, um, now this is just, um, I, I'd call this a luxury item. Um, it's not a necessary item, but it's a luxury item, but it works really well. Now this is light earth and you get all sorts of uh, different colors that you can use. Oh, there we go. We've got uh, dry mud, uh, black soot, now I'm going for the light earth effect. Um, now weathering powder is just like poster paint. Um, I don't know if you can see that in there. It's just a dust. So what you need to apply it is a nice brush, a bit like a blusher brush that you, uh, you use to put on your face and that type of stuff. It's a very, very soft head. And all we do is we just load up our brush like so. So we've got plenty on there, and all we're doing is we're dabbing it on to our miniature. Now this will go into all the little recesses. Um, what we do, we just add it on there. We're just pushing it on a little bit. I'm, I'm only adding it to the main tiles in the main room, because what's going to happen is that's also going to tint these little 
places here. And we're just pushing it down a little bit more. And then all we do is you tap it off. Like so. And that's uh, simple how you add this. Uh, and this is how you add that effect. I'm <laughs> mumbling away, excuse me. Let me just put that back into my little pot. This is why I add it to the paper, because I can turn the paper over like so. And then just push it, and then just pour it back into my little pot. There we go. Come on, come back in. There you go. Perfect. And then you're not wasting any of the powder. Okay. All we do now is we go with a little, another little brush and we can start working our way with this powder that's left and moving it into different parts of the miniature. And it's a bit like a blusher. So you're just adding certain parts of the miniature. And you can work that beautifully around and it gives a very nice worn effect let me see if we can get in closer just to give you an idea as you can see what's happened is it goes into all the little areas just like an ink wash would but it's giving you that um, like um, worn shadow effect um, and it's it's giving you a very nice stone um, and dirty mud, um, light mud, should I say, going around the rest of the miniature. And what you do, you just keep on tapping off the excess that you don't need, and that's perfect. Now, what you can do as well, and I highly recommend it when you're using any of this type of um, powder, is you can spray the miniature afterwards with a... Um, matte varnish spray and that will keep your color um, and it'll keep it nice and attached to the miniature otherwise you can end up having little bits of dust flying around everywhere yes I'll do that yeah no not a problem So, let's add the last little bits. Now, you're just saying it's going into a desert theme. And that's, that's what I was trying to explain to you at the beginning of the show. And that is, this um, miniature is perfect and would work with any type of um, terrain. Uh, you could have it with a snow terrain going around it. You could have it with the sand. You could have it with the desert. Um, you could have it all sorts of um, jungle effect any anything you wanted really um, um, it's I think there's, there's no particular sculpt in this miniature that represents anywhere in particular I know you've got the columns uh, but there's nowhere that you can really say oh that belongs to a certain place in the world or the fantasy world you know Mm, an ancient snow temple, that would be good. Yes, I know it's Greek. It would be Greek to knife. <laughs> I'm going with Greek! <laughs> you can do all sorts. Uh, I mean, there we are. Um, i got some grass in here. I could add some grass to this, but maybe it would look wrong now. Added some grass. But what I can actually do is I can actually change the effect instantly by just adding the dry mud effect. Or I could change it and add the black soot effect. Um, it's all sorts of different effects. I haven't, I haven't even tried these two. Um, but I've got all sorts of different powders and dusts that you can actually add. I've got aged rust and light to rust. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you, t <laughs> uh, you tell me put that knife. <laughs> Oh, anyway, while I'm while I'm thinking of what to do next with this miniature, um, all the people that are on a painted tier, if you type in now, give me a free mini, and um, Claire will enter you into our tonight's draw for your free miniature. Hello, Tule. I was, oh, I was just saying about um, you. You are streaming later and later, so I don't know if you're going to be streaming at about ten to nine. If you want to be raided tonight, Tule. Uh, but I did mention earlier. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, and, it, and it's so too late if you go onto your stream in um at uh, 10 minutes to nine which is 10 minutes time then i will raid you um okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to do now with this while everybody's doing their give me a free minis, give me a free minis, give me a, I keep, I keep knocking the camera, I got it too close to my earlug today. <laughs> you don't have to be honoured about it, it's, I, 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 I'll, it's, it's lovely to, um, you're, you're a friend, um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to raid you many times, but uh, you seem to change your times when you stream in. Um, okay, I'm going to add a little bit of grass to the outsides of this, I think. Just a little bit, just to finish it off a little bit. And maybe add a little bit inside, so it's kind of had some leaves and little bits just going around. So I got some... PVA glue. Hmm. No, it's, it's it's not it's not it's not not a problem, uh, Tula. Not a problem at all. Okay, so I've just got a little tub top here. I'm just going to add a little, little bit of um, PVA glue. And we shall add that. Add the PVA glue around the miniature. Sorry, I'm reading reading everybody what everybody's saying and trying to do this at the same time. I should concentrate on what I'm doing here. Now, you don't have to add any extra bits to your miniature, um, but I want to just add a little bit of flocking here and there. So, um, just certain places um, I just think will work well, and it also helps to give a bit more life to the miniature. So just certain places like the corners. Um, a little bit inside. Uh, this is an open air. This is an open air type of building. So leaves and grass would get blown inside. And of course, in the corners, you'd have little build-ups. So we put a little extra bit of glue in the corners because um, that's where your leaves and your grass would mount up, where it's got trapped by the wind. Uh, 
a little bit there. Just a tiny bit here. Oh, it's as simple as that. And all we do then, I've got my little mixture here. This is little leaves and grass that I mix together. And again, I'll need a little bit of paper to put this on. And what we can do is just sprinkle the little leaves and the grass over certain parts where we just added that PVA glue. And what we do is we don't remove the grass instantly. Um, what we do is we let the PVA glue soak in first. And um, a lot of people instantly remove the grass as soon as they add it. And uh, so what happens then is you get like a strung out stringy piece of grass a strung out stringy piece of grass. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? Um, so what we're just doing is letting the grass settle into the glue and for the glue to soak into the grass and that'll grab onto the chunks more. That'll grab onto the grass more and you'll get a thicker coating of grass with your PVA glue. <laughs> don't know what that is. Muses touch has got me going. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so all we need to do now is give that a couple of uh, minutes to let that settle in. And then we can actually give that a little tap and get rid of the extra grass. But what you can also do is we've added that PVA glue there. Um, let me see if I can find my little bottle. I probably cannot find it now I want it. Um, I have a little spray. Now, what you can do is you can mix PVA glue with water. Now, if you've got a little spray pot, um, if you, you can water down the PVA to about a 50-50 mix. <laughs> And then you can actually spray over your whole miniature. And what that'll do is that'll bond all that grass on the top of the miniature. So you um, you don't have to actually remove all this grass. What you can do is um, keep the grass as it is and have it nicely spread out around the miniature. And just by using a little um, spray, um, you know the little sprays I'm talking about, the ones that you just and you put water in them. I think women use them on their hair sometimes. Um, and you just you spray and, and that'll give it a lovely mist over the whole of the miniature. And as it's PVA glue with water mixed, it dries translucent anyway. But what will happen is that will actually stick all this down. You'll find that uh, railway modelers, rail, railway modelers use it um, all the time when they're doing their scenery and their mountains. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic way of bonding all the um, fibers together without them coming away and it, and it works really well <clears throat> excuse me um, now if I can find Sephor scale there he is that's to give you an idea of the scale of the miniature let's see ah, fighting skeleton da, 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 da. and as you can see um, just by this little bit of terrain, um, we've got ourselves a fantastic little diorama base as well. Um, let me see if I can move this again. Um, the white is reflecting, which has taken away the brightness of my screen. Let me just move that over there. There we are. Now you can see it. The colour's back. So as you can see, an absolutely fantastic way, a uh, fantastic piece of terrain super easy and super fast um, to make it look fantastic for your miniatures um, yes Rod it, um, all, all you need is a little bottle um, 
Uh, you know, like the wi okay, wi you know, windowlean. You know, the windowlean bottles where you get the little squirty thing. Just fill that up with a 50/50 mix of PVA glue and water. Give it a really good shake, um, and you'll be able to use it as a spray glue, and that will stick everything down to your miniatures. Okay, is uh, is Tule streaming now? Could you tell me if Tule streaming? Because what I'll do, this is um, the end of the show for me. Um, I want to thank every single one of you for popping on and supporting me and subscribing. I hope you enjoy this little show of just showing you a nice, simple, basic way to paint um, a little bit of terrain. I mean, this is fantastic terrain from Reaper. Um, I I've got a I got a passion for terrain builds um i mean i've painted thousands and thousands of reaper miniatures now um and i really want them to start bringing in more terrain because yes we've got thousands of miniatures but we haven't got the buildings and i, I keep on I, I know i keep on pushing it i know i keep on pushing it but i really do want reaper to release more buildings and a tavern because it would be affordable plus um I can guarantee you if Reaper Miniatures did um, a full-on tavern like they've done the big dragons because you know I mean the last Kickstarter they did the boat I mean the boat is huge they could do a tavern set they could do it they could do a three-story tavern set you know you could have the basement you could have the boulders gate you know the whole shebang it would be an absolutely major top sell I can guarantee you that would be sold out um, so yeah, um, I I would definitely like a, a tavern. <laughs> I like that. I jumped into a five minute conference call. I know the police has foliage. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay, could someone tell me if um, um, Tule is streaming so I can we can go and give her a quick raid? Thank you, I'm big. I, I can't even. I, I'm big. I, I, I'm big gnostic. I'm big gnostic. See, I can read when I can actually see what I'm looking at. You take care, Casper Kenobi. Thank you so much for popping on. Okay, I shall give Tule a raid. I shall say I love. To, I love you all. <laughs> love to every single one of you. Um, I shall be back on Thursday with my Wizkid stream. Um, but for now, we'll go and raid too late for five minutes, shall we? So forward slash raid. Um, that's not right, is it? <laughs> Good night, Mokai. Good night, Tal. Good night, John Boy. <laughs> <laughs> 